Hi friends, welcome to Real World Plant-Based Diet. This week, I want to talk more about the topic of insulin because it is so important. It is important for obesity, for diabetes, for all sorts of lifestyle disease, and I'm realizing it's so important for weight loss, hormone regulation, menopause, the way it's impacting me. I am not currently struggling with obesity or type 2 diabetes, but I am seeing an entire pattern my entire life about weight loss and about not being able to lose weight the way that I want and not being able to have the body composition that I want, not being able to be lean. And it has just been an absolute mind-blowing light bulb moment for me since I read this book, Fast, Feast, Repeat by Jen Stevens. And she has two chapters in here about clean fasting. And understanding why clean fasting is so important and not getting away with the 10 calories worth of almond milk or the lemon lime flavored seltzered waters or the diet Dr. Pepper that I used to be addicted to. It's understanding why that is so important. And I think that could help a lot of people. And hopefully my explanation, my story could help somebody understand why it's been hard to lose weight and why it can be contributing to obesity, diabetes, hormonal issues, hot flashes, all of it. So let me just dive in here with my story and why this just hit me with a ton of bricks, like a ton of bricks. <laughs> So when I was reading this, I got to, really, it came down to one sentence, like five or six words. I was constantly spiking my insulin. What is that? Six words. I was constantly spiking my insulin. Six words. It's changing my life. Absolutely changing my life, especially changing my life as a 48 how old am I? I keep forgetting. I don't know if I'm 47 or 48. I'm a 48 year old woman. I am turning 49 this spring. Absolutely life changing for me to understand how I was constantly spiking my insulin. Even though for me, always being on a diet, always worried about being thin, always exercising things away, restricting my calories, I was constantly spiking my insulin with zero calories or like 10 calories. People who struggle with obesity can be constantly spiking their insulin with a lot more calories by constantly eating food. Um, we can get into binge eating, binge eating disorder, food addictions, and it's all related to our hormones and mostly insulin. To some extent, cortisol which is another topic I could do a whole different video on that as well. So basically what happens is anytime you eat anything, your body releases insulin. You get a spike of insulin and the insulin is released to take that energy, the glucose, the fats, um, you know, all, whatever your food is made up of, which uh, on a macro level is protein, carbohydrates, and fats, your body takes that and the insulin helps to store it, use it, get it into your system, get it into your cells, store it in your liver as glycogen, get it up to your brain to be used and burned up as glucose, get it to your muscles to be used up as glucose, and then whatever's left, if you have too much, um, it gets stored as fat. And it gets stored as fat in your fat cells, some fat gets stored in the liver, um, but I'm trying to give just a real simplistic, I'm not gonna go into every scientific study. I could, I thought about putting together a presentation, uh, going into all the science, but that resonates with some people and doesn't resonate with other people. So I'm trying to get this point across with a story and with what I have recently learned in these simplest terms so that it can help anybody. So, you eat something and your body wants to use it up as fuel and whatever is excess gets stored. And that's what, that's the job of insulin 
is to push that food energy where it needs to go and then push the extra into storage. What was mind blowing to me was scientific studies that were done on artificial sweeteners, on sweet flavors, zero calorie like sweetened liquids, not even swallowing. Just they'd done studies where people put a sweetened zero calorie solution in their mouth, swished it around and spit it out. It spiked the insulin. So for those of us who love a little bit of something sweet in the coffee, love a little bit of diet soda, a little bit of La Croix, the flavored seltzers, every time we are drinking that, we are spiking insulin, spiking insulin, spiking insulin. Even stuff like brushing our teeth. Most um, toothpaste have sweeteners, but all the intermittent fasting community, they're very clear. Brush your teeth every morning. Because when you do that, yeah, there's a little bit of flavor in your mouth, but it happens once. What happens to people who are constantly sipping sweetened coffee, sweetened drinks, whether there's calories or no calories, is that you're doing that. Like how long does it take you to drink a big mug of coffee with, for me, I used to use those flavored Splenda packets. And then I got into the vegan French vanilla creamer. So I have a big cup of coffee with something sweet in it, or I have, then I was like, oh, it's caffeine that's bothering all my hormones. And so I got off almost all caffeine, then I'm drinking roasted dandelion root tea, which tastes a little bit like coffee. So then I would put my creamer in it, or I'd put, if I didn't want the sugar, oh, it's the sugar that's bothering my hormones. I'd put uh, plain almond milk in it. Every time that you're putting food or a food-like substance that tastes sweet or tastes like food. So anything that has um, a fruit flavor, any sort of sweetness flavor, sugary flavor, vanilla flavor, any flavors, these artificial flavors, natural flavors, anything that says natural flavor, all of these things do it. All of these things spike the insulin. And I had no idea this was happening, but it made, it now makes so much sense to look back at my entire history of dieting since I was like 10 years old, but always having a sweet tooth, always wanting a little sweet drink in the morning, having Diet Dr. Peppers like all through my teenage and college years, through my 20s, then going into the work world and having coffee every morning. And even now, like the herbal teas and whatever, and like, oh, this isn't going to matter. And what I knew about fasting. I knew the benefits of intermittent fasting. I even lost some extra pounds that way. But what's interesting to me is that every time you're doing this, every time you're spiking your insulin, you're going into fat storage mode. You're not giving your body that rest that is meant from fasting. And that rest period is when your body can switch over. It's burned up all the food. It's stored the food that it wants to store. And then you keep going. You keep going throughout your day, just day-to-day -day activities, walking, you know, bringing in groceries, going about your work, whatever you're doing, you need energy throughout the day. So when you run out of the energy from your food, you run out of the energy that's pulled from your liver glycogen stores and your muscle glycogen stores, which holds some amount of calories to keep you going throughout the day. Eventually you reach a point where you run out. It's somewhere between 12 and 20 hours since the last time that you ate. That's when your body switches over and it's a harder process than burning that readily available food, uh, fuel source, the glucose. Uh, the glycogen, but it then it will go in, dip in to your fat stores and start burning all that stored fat. And so we live in Western society, we live in an absolute overabundance of food. We have too much. We're never reaching the point of starvation, fight or flight, running from a tiger, we are in relatively good times where we can have very little activity and abundance, overabundance of food. 
And so most of us have extra fat stored on our bodies. And for some of us like me, who's always watching my weight, always been dieting, always trying to be in that normal BMI, I have, I'm what I call skinny fat. And so I'll have like this extra on my tricep, but I'll be like, you know, 135 pounds, like total dead middle of the BMI. I'm not overweight. But now I realize that I don't, I haven't ever been able to sculpt that lean looking body, looking good in a bikini, if you will, <laughs> because I've never let my body get into fat burning mode burning off all that stored fat. And because I watch calories and things, I don't have an, a lot of excess that's put away. It comes and goes. My jeans get tighter. My jeans get looser. But I've never given my body that rest, that fasting time. Fasting that has been known about in cultures for thousands of years, different religious practices. The health benefits are starting to be studied so much more. And it's just it's so important giving our bodies that break from constantly either taking in food or constantly taking in even flavors, sweet flavors or a few calories, 10 calories. Every time we do it, we're releasing that insulin. And I now realize that my body has been flooded with insulin constantly. And so it can't switch over into burning off what's stored on me it's got this insulin flowing everywhere. And then cortisol, secondary hormone that's involved in this, cortisol's the little, little sister of insulin. And it does the same thing, but not quite to the same level. And cortisol is a stress hormone. And so that's another thing. It's like the entire, I had an 18 year career in the chemical industry. And I, well, and you can go, anybody can go take it back um, to whatever you've experienced in your life, like childhood or was high school hard for you or was college a difficult time or, um, you know, corporate job that maybe didn't, that stressed you out all the time like it did for me. And it's like I was constantly living in a soup of cortisol as well, which stores fat around the middle section. It's telling your body you better store fuel because we're in danger. We need to run from that saber tooth tiger and I better have some fuel store for when I need it. So <laughs> this is just all like, is this like mind blowing to y'all? Like, please like make a comment down below if you, if this is helpful for you, if you understand the concept and if you're seeing, if a light is coming on, like, are you seeing like me? how this has happened throughout your life and how important fasting can be. Fasting is so important. I'm moving into clean fasting and I had a talk with my husband and I'm going to be clean fasting, allowing my body to reach that point of burning off all these excess uh, fuel that's in the fat cells. Like I also, part of being skinny fat is I've always had cellulite on my legs, on my rump, you know, to TMI maybe for <laughs> some of these videos. And I always thought, you know, oh, well, this, you know, women in my family, we all have this, we all, but it's like, I'm starting to understand hormonally why I have all those little pockets of fat stored. And I have faith that some really uh, solid weeks, months, like this is, this is so important to me that I'm making a lifestyle out of this. And I am ready, had the conversation with Simon that I'm going to be clean fasting for 18 to 20 hours each day. So one meal a day type fasting. If you watch the presentation that I did on intermittent fasting, I talked about the different fasting styles. I'll put a link to that presentation in the video description down below. For anyone who hasn't seen that one going over intermittent fasting in general, um, this today's video is more about how this is impacting me, the changes that I'm going to make, and really this topic of insulin, this, this, the one sentence, the six words that changed my life. I was constantly spiking my insulin, and now I'm going to stop doing that. So 18 to 20 hours a day, and that can be one meal a day type fast. I would say 18 to 24 hours. 
some days I might go around the clock and just have one meal. It's called OMAD, one meal a day fasting. And other days I do enjoy having lunch with Simon sometimes, and but we're gonna eat in more of a compressed window and Simon's on board with this. He's feeling the same way. Like he's always been like natural athlete is how he describes himself and always been super lean. His family's been, uh, you know, probably has better genetics for it than I do. Um, but he is feeling what he calls squeegee, especially as he gets older or like we've been having uh, lots of snow and weird weather conditions here. He hasn't been able to go out for a run. He hasn't been able to play soccer like he normally does. That's what he did all his life, played soccer. So he hasn't been able to get at it from the burning it off exercise end of the equation. But also I think just this constant sipping on something, constant eating, snacking something, because I'm always cooking. We both love food, we're foodies. And so there's always something good available in our house. Maybe it's the working from home as well, um, but he's just feeling this squidgy. And then I'm, but I explained this to him about the constantly spiking the insulin and you know, he got it. It's like once you, once the light bulb turns on, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and like, I don't want to do that. I want my body to be burning off my fat stores. And it means, all it means is that I just change when I eat. I don't have to change what I'm eating. And I honestly, I feel like we can even eat richer foods. I don't have to be controlling things by the amount of fat or oils or now for us, I eat a mostly vegan vegetarian diet and I don't think that's going to change for me, but I'm, this topic is so big for me that I realize this can be done with any diet. You don't have to go plant-based, mostly plant-based. It's more about when you are eating, not what you are eating. Tons of people do this with a keto diet because they're keeping the insulin down even more. These high fat diets, I personally don't feel good on that way of eating. And I personally can never go back from plant-based, mostly plant-based because I feel what happens to the animals. I feel for the animals and the planet. And so I just, I can't, I will be continue to eat plant-based, but will I be allowing myself maybe some richer foods, more avocado, more nuts, a little bit of oil and some recipes, some vegan junk food. I'm going to experiment with that. I'm going to see how that goes because I absolutely believe that this is going to be, you know, to the point where it's almost like 90% more important when I'm eating and a little bit of what I'm eating. And so I'm, I joined a good group uh, from Jen Stevens, a book club group based around this uh, on Facebook. And I'll put the information for her groups in the description down below if any of y'all are interested. And uh, they talk about how the longer you do clean fasting, you start tuning into your body and it's all, you know, it's fun to, okay, it's my eating window or it's my one meal a day and I'm just going to have whatever I want because I've been restricting all my life and that's fine. You can do that. But eventually, I guess you won't feel so great. Now, Simon and I, we've reached the point where our diet is so healthy with the real world plant-based type of eating that we do that when I'm working on fasting longer and fasting even 24 hours, I'm not feeling that bad, but it's because my diet was pretty cleaned up to start with. Um, but that's that's a big topic. I just wanted you all to understand this, this concept of spiking your insulin all day and not wanting to do that. Give your body a break. And when you give your body a break from eating and having flavors, then your body will start dipping into that stored fat, start changing the composition of your body, start melting that fat off. I've taken some before pictures and I will show you before and after, um, after weeks, months of clean fasting. I'll show you that, how that's going for me. Uh, but I feel better already. This is impacting my hot flashes, my night sweats. Um, when I do long, clean fasts, 
And for me, I'm realizing when I still watch the amount of alcohol and sugar in my diet, I've shifted to, Simon and I took a three week break from sugar and now we're only having desserts that are naturally sweetened, no refined sugar. Um, and then alcohol, I'm only having with a meal, with dinner on a weekend. I'm not like having drinks all night long. I realize I can't do that. That makes me not sleep well. That's, that's another big topic. <laughs> Everything that I'm doing to work on hot flashes, and you've seen some videos about that, but just the idea of stop spiking your insulin all day long allows your body to go in and start burning off the fat. And, you know, tons of success stories from people who follow Jen Stevens, uh, Jason Fung. This is impacting how I do health coaching. It may impact this channel. It may impact my focus on plant-based diet. I mean, I love the benefits of plant-based diet, not just for health, human health, but for the animals and the planet as well but I'm realizing how much this can help, this intermittent fasting, this clean fasting, this not spiking your insulin, letting your body dip into those fat stores, how much this can help people struggling with obesity, with their weight, with even getting the last few pounds off, getting their body to look the way they want, and type two diabetes, lifestyle diseases, this helps high blood pressure, cholesterol, all the things that were in my previous video, all about intermittent fasting. But this is gonna impact my coaching style and the way that I help people with transforming their health. I, I came about it and have done so much with my health with a plant-based diet, but I realized there's in general, there's a small, small portion of society that wants to go that route or is at that space where they are interested in vegetarian or vegan or much less whole food plant-based, whole food plant-based, no oil. I can see how that to a lot of people starts feeling more and more and more and more restrictive. But understanding this topic of insulin and not spiking your insulin levels and just giving your body a break, no matter what diet, no matter what you eat, no matter if your f family gets takeout and goes out to eat almost every night of the week, that's fine, that's cool. I understand how to help people no matter what they're eating. That's how powerful this is. And so I'm so excited about it. If you have had any experiences with intermittent fasting, with clean fasting, or have struggled with fasting, and now you're realizing, oh my gosh, I was putting some cream in my coffee, or I was drinking these bulletproof coffees. And I love the way Jen puts it um, on the topic of the bulletproof coffees, or the supplements, or the um, adding anything with proteins, amino acids, things in, she says, if you're eating, you are not fasting. And what she means by that is if you're putting caloric things into anything, you're not fasting. If you're putting proteins in, protein containing things into anything, you're not fasting. You really need to be drinking water, black coffee, black tea, green tea, and possibly some herbal teas um, if they're more of a bitter flavor. None of the herbal teas that have like a fruity flavor, that herbal teas are a, a gray zone. I am sticking with black coffee. For me, it has to be decaf because I'm having a lot of hot flash <laughs> hormonal issues. And I tried a little mixture of decaf and regular coffee. It wasn't good for me. So for me, black decaf coffee and plain green tea <clears throat> and water. That's what I have during my clean fasting. So this is an experiment for me, but from everything that I have read, and this is based on the most recent research, she's citing studies from 2019. This is such a hot topic that so many people are having so much success losing weight, reversing obesity, reversing lifestyle diseases, in a simpler way 
than having to completely clean up the diet. Just focusing on when you eat, not what you eat. And I just want to encourage and help, help as many people as possible to get healthy. And yes, doing it with a healthy plant-based diet is one way, and we've had a lot of success with that. But it's almost like I've discovered a shortcut, an easier way. And it doesn't have to be hard and you don't have to constantly be following a certain diet plan. And you can, and like I've said with the plant-based, but even more, uh, less restrictive, what am I trying to say? More free, more freedom. You can go out to restaurants like a, in, like I was, I would always say in real world plant-based diet, yeah, you can do that and you can do a little bit of vegetarian and you can be mostly plant-based, but it's like, I'm starting to see and understand. It's like, you can help yourself with lifestyle disease, obesity, and you can do it even if you eat at restaurants all the time or if you have processed foods or you don't like, you can start where you are at with whatever diet. So I just wanted to share this. I'm super excited about this topic of letting your body rest, letting the insulin levels come down. Now, again, I am not a doctor. If you're gonna dive into this and you're going to start working on when you eat instead of what you eat, and you're on medications, you have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, uh, type two diabetes, uh, you can probably make a lot of great changes and back off on medications, but you're gonna need the help of your doctor. So make sure you check in with your doctor, you're working together as you change and go and give your body that break. Give your body a break from constantly flooding it with insulin and let it go in and start burning off your fat. This may impact how much medication you need for different things. So definitely work with your doctor. But if you have any questions about any of the study, recent studies, things that I, research that I've been doing, and I will share pictures and information about how this clean fasting is going for myself, my husband, Simon. And it's so interesting to me that I've been intermittent fasting to some extent for a couple years now, and now I am seeing the magic of the clean fasting and what that can do for us. And I just think it's gonna make a huge, huge change in my body composition, my ultimate weight where I end up, the way my clothes fit, the hormonal concerns, menopause. I'm just excited about it. So I hope this extra information and the story about how the light bulb went off for me and where I'm at with all of this, I hope this can be helpful to anyone out there. If you wanna join me in this journey, feel free to come along and start intermittent fasting with me. Um, put, any, put a comment down below and if you'd be excited about starting this as well or if you've had some success with this um, i would love to hear from you and i think that's it friends you're going to be hearing more about intermittent fasting on this channel and i just i'm excited about broadening the scope and being able to help people with health no matter what diet they're eating even though a plant-based diet is near and dear to my heart for a lot of reasons, I realize a lot of people aren't there yet. So, all right, I'm starting to ramble, y'all. I'm going to end this video and think about that key sentence. Are you always spiking your insulin? And it can be done with zero calories. It can be done with flavors. So, clean fasting giving your body a rest and allowing it to burn fat off of you. That's the way to go. If you like my videos, feel free to give a thumbs up, subscribe down below. You can hit the bell for notifications. I put out new videos every Wednesday morning and I have a Facebook group. Information on that is down below, website, all of that extra information. And I look forward to talking to you next week, friends.